gentlemen, what a day. Sunny, beautiful winter afternoon here on Dr. Martin Luther King's uh, official birthday holiday. And we gather together, all of us residents of Brooklyn, in the new Senate district that our senator to be Luke Fiddler will serve, and indeed all of Brooklyn and New York. One thing that immediately impresses me, you have no idea how busy elected officials are today. The number of elected officials, Lou Fiddler, that are here, that took their time to get here today and to show their support is absolutely unbelievable. So, let me list, if I may, Assemblywoman Helene Weinstein. Yeah. Assemblyman Stephen Simbrowitz. Yeah. City Council Member Michael Nelson. Yeah. Councilwoman yeah. Melissa Mark Viverito. Yeah. Assemblyman Alan Mazel. Yeah. Assemblyman Alec Brooke Krasny. Yeah. One and only Council Member of Finance Chair Dominic Recchio. Yeah. Councilman Stephen yeah. Levin. Yeah. A dear friend of ours, former everything and to be, <laughs> Frank Sadio. Yeah. And Council Member Jumani Williams. Yeah. Why are we all here? Because we know. Move in the Boston Senate. 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 I love it. Move in the Boston Senate. 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 Well, they took the words out of my mouth. We're here because. Has there ever been anyone more qualified to be our state senator? Is there anyone that you can think of as more training that has proven over and over and over again and has set the bar as to what an elected official should be? With honor and dignity, he will serve as Senate District all of Brooklyn and all of New York State. What is the Wow. Uh, first, I, I guess the first order of business is I'd like to introduce uh, to the media a bunch of, just a few of my friends. Um, I know the Senate Republicans, uh, you know, said that we were coming to City Hall today because uh, uh, I'm being supported by a bunch of insiders. But I just want you to know that everyone who's standing behind me here is a civic leader, a religious leader, a community leader, someone who's given up their time to make our city a better place. And today, in the cold, I can't think of anything more apt description to call them outsiders. So uh, I, I am very, I'm, I am so proud to have all of them here, uh, standing here with me, uh, them and, and so many more who uh, have lent their name to, the, to this effort. So let's get down to the order of business of the day. I'm here today to tell you that I'll be accepting the nomination of the Democratic and Independence parties to be the next state senator for the 27th district. Yeah! So we, yeah. So we can restore the faith of the citizens of Southern Brooklyn in common sense government they can trust. Let's be honest. In the last year, the citizens of Southern Brooklyn in particular have had their confidence jolted twice. Certainly by uh, his own admission, Senator Kruger has committed acts that violated the public trust in, in quite frankly, despicable ways. Ten years ago, the voters of the 46th Council District put a trust in me. It's a trust that I believe and I hope I've never violated. I promised that if I had the honor and privilege of representing the citizens of Southern Brooklyn at City Hall, and I use the words honor and privilege advisedly because I view it as an honor and a privilege and a public trust, that I would wake up every day and work as hard as I could to make their lives better and to always tell the truth. I believe I've done those things. And let me tell you, it's because of the background that I came to that job with. I didn't wake up one day and was appointed city council member. I grew up in a house where my father was the vice chairman of the local community board. My mother was the president of the Parents Association of every school I attended. 
as the youngest of three, I would frequently get dragged along to those meetings. So I had a sense of civic activism and community spirit. I was the founding director of our Neighborhood Housing Services Program, the vice president of our Community Development Corporation. And by the time I was 26, I was very proud to be the local community board chairman. It's that background of public service and community activism that brought me 10 years ago to City Hall, and it's that background that I hope will take me to the chambers of the State Senate on March 20th. Yeah. So let me just tell you a little bit about my philosophy of what a good elected official should be. I call it the four C's. The first is common sense. You have to have common sense about things that people actually care about in their everyday lives. The kind of common sense that tells you not to raise property taxes when you're in the middle of a mortgage foreclosure crisis. In fact, the kind of common sense that tells you when you're watching what's going on in real estate closings as an attorney that a mortgage foreclosure crisis is coming. And everybody behind me here knows that two years before we hit that crisis, I predicted it. I predicted it because I saw what was coming every day. Not because I'm an expert in Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac, but because I went to real estate closings and understood what was going on in everyday lives. And as a result of that, we took action. We created the Center for New York City Neighborhoods, and thousands of New Yorkers were spared the pain of having their homes foreclosed upon because there was common sense. There's a little bit too much ide ideology and ideological battles going on in Washington, and particularly Albany in the State Senate. People are tired, tired of partisan bickering. There's too much right wing and left wing and top and bottom. People are just interested in having someone go to government who's going to look at common sense solutions to common everyday problems. That is number one, common sense. Number two is communication. I know that uh, I have a reputation for being one of those guys who shows up at just about every meeting in the neighborhood. And I go and I stay. And if it's at all possible, I stay for the whole meeting because I think it's at least as important to hear what my constituents have to say as it is for them to hear what I have to say. So every now and then, government needs to shimmy down from the ivory tower and talk to people about what matters in their everyday lives. I have made a promise that I have kept, and I will keep it in the State Senate. Every constituent who writes to my office, who communicates to my office, I read every letter or fax or email that comes. And I respond personally to every single one. And if I'm elected to the State Senate, I will continue that policy of communicating with my constituents. Maybe I should quit with two C's. <laughs> the third is character. You have to know right from wrong. And frankly, that's the kind of character that tells you that when you know that 3,800 children are sleeping on the streets every night, homeless without their families, that responsible adults don't leave them sleeping on the streets without a shelter bed. That, yes. yeah. That's the kind of character that you need, a character with compassion. And last, and this may be the most important of the four C's, once you've figured out what's right and wrong, the good ideas from the bad, heard from your constituents, you have to have a little bit of chutzpah. You have to be able to stand up and say what needs to be said to those who need to hear it. I am very, very much my mother's son. My mother... <laughs> They must know my mom. <laughs> my mom always believed that if something should be said, it needed to be said, it was said. You know, those of you who follow uh, the city council playbook know that I haven't always gotten along with the mayor. Uh, I have tremendous respect for him, but we fought over issues like congestion pricing and property taxes or uh, back when he wanted to reduce garbage pickup in our neighborhoods to one day a week or to close our firehouses or our senior citizen centers. So we've had our ups and downs. But maybe the best thing that's ever been said about me as an elected official was said by Mike Bloomberg. 
He was out in our district talking to about 100 seniors. And he got up in front of the room, and as is the case in politics, you kind of have to say something nice about your host. The mayor looked out at the audience and said, you know, Lou Fiddler, your councilman, he's no shrinking violet. And when he's on the other side, he can be quite a pain in the behind. Frankly, I think what the mayor was saying was that I fight hard for what I believe in, and I do it effectively. And we're going to take that policy, we're going to take that practice, and we're going to go to Albany in the State Senate where they really, really need it, and we're going to go to Albany, and we're going to make some change up in Albany in the State Senate. Are you with me?